Well, welcome, my friends. And here we are, Monday, this, what did I just say? The 16th of uh, June. Pretty soon we'll be saying, what happened? The summer's over. <laughs> but it was a beautiful day today. I think we might have been in the 80s today. Man, he's missing again. He's somewhere uh, uh, collected signatures to repeal the, the uh, <laughs> he says he is anyway, I'm not so sure. But he's, he, he wants to repeal the casino law, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, sitting in his chair is uh, Mr. Vincent Grove. He's been here before many times, not many times, a few times, but he wants to make sure that we don't get out of the way on uh, the uh, new school for the Herald and the Wyman School. Well, thanks for so, always inviting me uh, back. Uh, I appreciate okay. it. It's all right. And we're going to uh, continue on until that school is built. So anytime he watches the program, so he's one of the few that watches the program all the time, and he says that if we uh, make an error of what he considers an error, he wants to come down and correct it right <laughs> fast. So that's good. So I'm going to let him sit here and yell at me for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to send him on his way. So Vincent, now, this is where we we're at from my side of the coin, okay? We're not going to the Wyman School. The old Wyman right? School, right? The old Wyman School. We're not going there. Probably not. There's a slight chance, in my mind, that we could go to the Mormon lot on Wyman Street that's over towards Burlington, right? A lot of people don't know that, but I mean, so it's, it's almost right on the Burlington line, would you say? Uh, yeah, it's about, uh, I'd, I'd say it's about a quarter of a mile. A quarter of a mile? Yeah. It's maybe, just maybe before less. Uh, uh, Warren Cummins' house, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, there's, there's the, um, right, just, yeah, before, just before, there's two houses and there's Mr. Cummings' yeah, house. Yeah, there's a little street, little a dead-end yeah. street in there, too, yeah. yeah. Okay, so well, I'm, not, I'm not against that. And then we got the Hurl, uh, the Hurl lot down there, which is underwater, they claim, and they can't do, there's a seven, eight, ten acres or something down there, and they got no... Uh, they said they have to tear the school down and put it over here and blah, 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 and all that. So I'm not sure how that's going to go. So you guys are moving up closer to the top of the pile only because I thought that uh, I never knew that this was a two entrance and exit thing. And that gives you Lowell Street in the back and Wyman Street in the front. And before I forget about it, let me let me do this here, and then we're going to get uh, have a little argument with Vinny here and <laughs> see if we can't get fired up. Tonight downtown, uh, downstairs in the auditorium, the Wuhan Historical Society show tonight at 7 o'clock. And it's typical of the Wuhan and the Historical Society. They do a great job. And the subject tonight is Wuhan and the Revolutionary War. And I think there were a lot of people from Wuhan in the Revolutionary War. I don't know why I think that. Somebody must have told me that in school or something once, so I'll remember it. So get off your butt. If you, first of all, put the, 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 higher, the soccer game on at 6 o'clock and see what the score is. And then by 6.30, you can jump in the car and come <laughs> down and watch the Revolutionary War. So that'll work out very well. I'm sure they'll be very happy. So that takes care of that. All right, so now let's get back here. We, so we, this is what we know. I talked to the mayor, I told you this earlier. I talked to the mayor, the mayor says, there's a process, Ed, that's the process we're gonna go. And we, I keep forgetting the name of the uh, consultant who's uh, doing this, Denisco Architects or something, something like, like that. that yeah. Half a million dollars, he's gonna come to Woburn and tell us where he thinks the school should go or shouldn't go. So. Tell us why, again, we shouldn't have it on your lot. Well, you know, you're right. The mayor has said to us there is a process, and, and we go by the public process. And, and I don't have a problem with that. I mean, that makes sense. If everyone were to try to have little meetings all over the place, it might be somewhat chaotic. So we, you know, I don't, we don't have a problem with that. But when you hire this consulting group, you know, one of our fears has been all along is that they look at, hard things. They, they look do. at numbers, they look at acreage, they look at square footage, they look at access, they look at uh, many things that you can quantify and, and qualify. That's right. They seldom, it seems to us, put much emphasis on um, the community value. Um, they look at 
is the land wet? So for flooding, they say, we do look at flooding, but they don't pay much attention to how much flooding happens in the next street over or the one over That's and the right. one over that. We all, they, all they care about is what's happening right there on that spot. Right, right on that spot. So we, we feel that um, we came together in the beginning, as you recall, because of this real concern for flooding that we have. Yeah. We said it before. Right. Built the, the cinema built out. People got more flooded. We That's just had a, someone send us a picture of their backyard um, after the cinema was built. Um, they built uh, the Murray, Murray Road extension. Uh, the people on Sheila got more flooded. Yep. They built Rose Farm, beautiful houses. The people who live there, they, they're so lucky to live there. But I understand that the, the very first major rainstorm, many of those houses flooded. And a lot of the people in our vicinity trace the increase in severity of flooding and frequency of flooding to those developments so more development that's how we started is flooding this is a flood area putting a school there is only going to exacerbate the flooding problem that we all have so that's our number one concern a second concern is that since we've had this um since the city we've we believe convinced the city to buy this property yep. Yep. because we advocated for the small meals tax that gets paid and the year before it was passed, it was very soundly defeated. And I don't know of any local politician who has um, voted for a tax, who has got re gotten reelected. No way, no way, no new taxes. That's, a, that's And so that's as, we flooded, as we flooded the um, city council chambers, had our meetings, had our little civic meetings, and, uh, drives to buy the property. Uh, and we, when they had those votes, showed up in mass into the city council chamber and gave them sort of cover that they said well this is one tax that the citizenry wants it's very small it's most of it is shouldered by people who come from outside the city yep. so we gave them cover we believe to pass that meals tax to buy this property remember the very year before the meals tax was soundly defeated the only difference was our participation this year right um so that's how we see it. So we believe that, that if we hadn't acted, there would be 17 houses on that property right now because we saw the plot plan for, for development for where on the farm is today, the 17 houses. Yeah. We, had a letter, we had letters from the developers. They had a lot of their pre-preliminary work done. If it wasn't for us, that, uh, that field would not be available today for our school. So it's kind of a promise made by the city to us because we gave them the place to find the money to buy that and Whispering Hills covers both yep. of them. Uh, and now we feel it unjust that, that they would say, well, you know, we're going to take that away that we promised you if to have. You, if you, you have 800 friends on Facebook. Well, we had 800 when we started here. We have almost 900. We have, today okay. we have 892. If Since were, we if started were, this. If you were able to poll a secret ballot or some yeah. kind of crazy thing, if, where would where would where do you think they'd pick the school to go? Because we know it's going there, so yeah, yeah. it's going someplace. Yeah. Um, I can't speak for everyone. We we're you know we're kind of an open organization, yeah. but I believe that the majority of the people would would go for the property that's now owned by the Mormon Church, because it's about a quarter of a mile down the road, yeah. and it is about 95% already paved from previous buildings. Yeah. It's concrete slab after slab with foundations underneath yeah. it. And the biggest detriment, if you ask us, the city engineer, he'll probably tell you, the biggest detriment to flooding is imper an impervious surface. Right. So that thing is probably causing flooding. To tear that up, put in the proper drainage that should be there, can't help but alleviate the flooding um, that we, all experience along Wyman Street. Mm -hmm. So it's a little smaller uh, acreage, um, but it's on the same street, about a quarter of a mile down. There's no community activity there. It's a blighted area. It's all chain link fence around it and just concrete slabs. Um, we think that would be a better, a better, air, a better um, site than, than our site, which since we, we purchased it, as you know, we had the farmer's market, 
we have multiple activities there. We went over them last time. Yep. I, want, I want to do that again, but let's finish this yeah. uh, morning. So, so I, I don't have any problem. I wouldn't have any problem, personally, I wouldn't have any problem as far as building a school in the Mormon, uh, where the Mormon yeah. mud is. So, so that, that's, I think, we believe would serve the purpose. It's almost in the exact same location as the school. So, so yeah. as far as having children from the Wyman come to it or from the Wyman area come to it or from the rural area come to it, it's pretty central. It's not being used for anything. Um, it's a blight. It's been vacant for a long time. Yeah, it's a blight. Building and and it, it is a cause for flooding that can be um, somewhat remediated. That's how we that's what we feel. Okay. The downside is, is that the city would have to buy it and so yeah. that's money. Yeah. Uh, but make a donation to the church for a couple yeah. of bucks and then yeah. maybe they give it to you. Well, that's know. the other thing. It, it's never going to produce taxes because it's it'll be owned by a church and I assume yeah. it'll be tax exempt. So it's not ever going to produce taxes. Um, that would be our I think we think the less the least disruptive um, so then I say the farmer's market is only 50 yards off of Wyman Street in the back. Okay, so now there's got to be a way if they, like a, for an emergency fire truck to go on this side, but if you wanted to go to the school, you could go in from Lowell Street in the back there. How many acres are there? Seven. Seven acres. So I say, okay, build a school back there, but now I understand that the, the group, your, your group, that they have a lot of activities and things going on there that they, they, they've started up and you're trying to get in a little history on and you don't want to give them up. Well, that's right. It's not just the farm stand. People say, oh, it's just a farm stand. You could put that somewhere else. Well, it's more than just the farm stand. We, you know, we cultivated the Wuben Agricultural Commission and Mr. Medeiros and Mr. Carley and uh, Mr. Doherty and Mr. Mooney. Mr. Beninati, they they authorized and and uh, and we all help out. They planted uh, about a half an acre or more of pumpkins last year. We grew between 500 and 1,000 pumpkins. We gave them away to all the children in the city when we had our children's fall festival. All free there for the kids, face painting, pumpkins, goodies. Um, so we've got that cultivated land. We have given. Uh, Saluna Farms uh, uh, access to plant some of their seed, some of their uh, crops there. They grow herbs and flowers. In return, they give, they provide classes to the city. They provide them at the farmers market. They provide them at the schools. So, in return for them cultivating that that area, they provide lessons in gardening and, and maintenance of gardens for the city. We have a, we won an entire fruit orchard, 35 fruit trees that we won from the Edie's fruit bar contest that they came down with a certified arborist. We have a whole fruit orchard there. Um, it's not just that farm stand. Um, we have, we use at least half of that acreage back there. So um, to say that, yeah, we could put the school back there. No, it's not just the farm stand. And then remember, it's about the flooding. We believe you put a big school in there, you pave the parking lots, yep. we will get flooded. I don't care what the engineer says. The engineers at the cinema, the engineers at Rose Farm, and the engineers at Murray Road Extension all said, don't worry about it, we all got flooding. So those are the reasons why we think that that's not a good site right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it's interesting that uh, that, uh, that there's that much activity on that particular lot. I mean, they got a path that you can walk a around. A walking and jogging path. Bring your path. dog around yep. and yep. all that kind of there's stuff. A little, there's a little pond there that we're, we believe is a vernal pool. The consulting company says there's no wildlife there. We have pictures of turtles and frogs. Even though the consulting company came down on the day when it was below freezing and said, we don't see any frogs. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they skate there. The city was great enough to put up a light stand in at night with a light switch during the winter time. The kids really? come down, they skate there. Yep, it was um, on the front page of the Advocate, pictures of the kids skating. Uh, it's on our website, we have pictures of the kids skating. If you go to the, um, the city website for, um, for Spence Farm, tiny, it's uh, tinyurl.com uh, Spence Farm. Uh, you'll see all the activities listed 
um, that we that have been happening there over the last couple of years. So, it's so you go to the meetings that the when the uh, when the, the building committee meets at City Hall, you go to those meetings and. And then the uh, architect or whatever consulting company, he reports to the building committee, and what do they yawn and say? Okay, <laughs> I mean, I, I I I don't know how I don't know what the qualifications are to be on the building committee. I mean, I don't think there's a lot of people in the city of Woburn that uh, are really qualified to be on a building committee to build a, a thirty-five million dollar building. You know, what I mean, if somebody said we're gonna my wife could go down there and say, if you want to build a house, you might yeah. have something to say about that. But uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, someone, someone has to look at the facts and make the decisions, I, I guess. And, and um, so they, you know, we have the city engineer and people from the school committee and the citizen and, and, and qualified people. A diversified group, A diversified group, group I think, yeah. And what, and yeah, we were at the last meeting and, and they had the, an evaluation sheet of, of all the things that, that they would look at and they had a weight for each one, like how many square feet and how many acreage and, and you know, what the top topography was and what the access was. And everyone had a, had a um, hard weight that they would put there. And one young lady stood up and said, gee, where's the weight for community values? Where's the weight for what the city cherishes? Where's the weight for, for um, quality of life things and, and yeah. where's the weight for the promises kept here? There's no weight there. And you know, the consult engineering consulting groups, they are there hard and fast on their numbers. And he said, well, we're, it's buried in and amongst the political and all yeah, these other weights, yeah. but I'll have to hand it to the mayor. And the mayor said, no, we need a line, especially for weight for something like community values. And what does the city lose in terms of its quality of life by losing this uh, piece of property. Now we've heard that, you know, you can do this other places. Well, I, I don't think you can. I mean, if you go somewhere else, you have to cut down all the trees and then you have to remove all the shrubs and tear out the stumps and remove the boulders and the rocks and make that first cut of the soil that has all the roots right near the surface. Yeah. Who's going to do all that? Yeah. Who's to plant um, pumpkins to give away to the kids? Um, we have some dedicated folks and, and, um, People who, on the building, on the agricultural commission, who give so much of their time, uh, Mr. Carley, Mr. Medeiros, Mr. Beninardi, Mr. Mooney, Mr. Darty, they bring their own equipment. They spend their own money a lot of times because uh, there is really no budget. They get a minimal budget. You know, yeah. we help them what we can. Um, they bring their, you know, Mr. Carley brings his animals to to make a petting zoo last year at the um, at the farmers market. He uses his tractor to, to bring up the field. He, he, no one pays him for gasoline. No one pays us for, for planting. Um, out of the budget, we bought the seed. A good bunch of citizens. Yeah, yeah, citizens. yeah. So they're there. Uh, we, it's hard to replicate that somewhere else, that, that the field isn't already there and ready to go. You, you know, you can't replicate these things other Vincent, places. 20 minutes you have been here. Ah, oh, geez. So that I'm quick? kicking you up. All right. Let's see the weather, uh, 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 Jennifer, and uh, I'm going to let him leave when she you. comes in here. You're, well, you're welcome. You I appreciate it. And, it's and, all right. Uh, yeah. We'll be, you'll be an old time, but we'll, we'll be older. Well, we'll be older than we are yeah. by the time Well, let, school, well let me say one thing. When, we first, when I first came here, we had about 800 people on the uh, Facebook. Yeah. Now we have about 900. Really? I think it's your program. I think, yeah, maybe you know, it is. Maybe yeah, it is. I got, think a lot know, of yeah. That maybe I think they're coming be because we've added that. almost ninety people since the first time I came here. Yeah. So it's not a it's not a, a kind of a stagnant list of people who have signed up once. It's <laughs> growing, <laughs> and I thank cool. you. Why <laughs> take don't uh, leave oh. it, that thing? You'll be right. running down. see 83 what's that what does that say i can't read that small print what's that 83 one tomorrow yes. really 83 it rain on wednesday god how come it rain? it's gonna rain thursday too yep. 76 74 55 god damn it all right well 
if this if this doesn't we're going to go back to san diego and los angeles if this doesn't keep this isn't working out at all too much but let's get down to the business at hand because i don't want to go home and watch the americans play the africans or what i think it's ghana at six o'clock and then maybe come back and watch the uh, historical society put on a sh show downtown down, right down here in the auditorium at seven o'clock Woman in the Revolutionary War. Maybe we'll find some relatives in there or something. All right, what I got here? World Cup at six. Okay. The Democrats had a convention on Sunday. <clears throat> Stephen Grossman, he's the state treasurer, he won that uh, that uh, uh, election at the uh, for the Democratic Party at the convention. Mrs. Coakley was uh, second. She's got in by about 30 points in the broader picture, but the Democratic Party, they like Grossman better, I guess. But we'll see, it's a long ways to go till September to the primary. The Han Pond Summer Concert Series is a go. The first concert is July 11th. So I think uh, uh, there'll probably, there won't be any brand new gazebo down there by July 11th, but let's hope by next year that, uh, that they can get that situation straightened out down there because I think that's a great place to have it. I'm not, I don't live down there, so I suppose the neighbors would be yelling at me saying, that's great, you, you, guys, you guys always like to have it in some place that's not near your house, so I said, okay. But July 11th, first concert. We'll talk about it again before that time. The fiscal 15 figure is at 130.4 million. That's going to be, that's kind of like the, 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 where the budget is right now. That'll change between now and then because money's going to come from the state and it, 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 that'll go up and down and move, maneuver around a little bit. But the city council has done as far as their job and they've uh, only cut $9,000 from the mayor's budget. And you say $9,000, that's like a thimble full of water out of uh, Horn Pond. Geez, 9000 why do you even bother? And then when I looked at the article that was in the Times after I saw that, it's uh, because uh, the uh, head assessor downtown there, he does a lot of uh, IT work in City Hall helping the uh, city clerk. I know he was there when we had the results from the elections. He puts up a screen, he helps with the computers and stuff like that. So uh, they cut his uh, budget from, I think, 12,000 to 3,000. So that's where the 9,000 went. I think it was, uh, I don't know, somebody must have been mad at him that day or something, I don't know. Didn't seem to be worth it. But I suppose 9,000 here and 9,000 there it starts to add up some money. The superintendent of schools outlines a two-pronged plan for reform. Schools to boast the service for regular education, reg, regular education students. Now, that's a kind of an interesting thing. If you have an IEP, which is an individual education plan, and that comes out of special ed, and then, you know, the social workers, everybody gets together, they give you a plan, an IEP plan, the teachers teach you a certain way, and uh, you get a little extra help. But what if you're having trouble with mathematics and uh, or, or reading or writing or some one of the subjects that uh, you're having difficulty with and, and uh, you don't have a, uh, you're not in a special education situation. So what, what's happening is the parents hire a tutor Maybe one of the teachers in the school, maybe a teacher from someplace else, or maybe some kids that's in college studying that subject could come over in the afternoon and help a kid learn how to read. And so that causes a problem because, you know, why do the parents have to pay, you know, to have their kid uh, tutored in the afternoon when he's a little bit behind in reading, say. So what they're going to do is they're going to have a few more new people come into the system in the budget increase and uh, maybe alleviate some of the cost to uh, the private kid that's having a little problem that's trying to catch up. So that's all that does. He's just uh, uh, trying to straighten out. That's why he has a, a two-pronged plan for reform. 
Three years after the shooting, the governor signs a settlement with uh, Officer DiNapoli. That had to go through the whole process. City Council, the mayor, legislature, Senate, I mean the House of Representatives, the Senate, and finally gets to the governor, he signs it. So everybody's happy. I'm not gonna get into the details. I don't care, it's none of my business, you know? All I know is the guy's a good guy and uh, anything that uh, could help him get through the rest of his days and, uh, is, is the, and a little bit of comfort is okay with me. Aramac. That's a big, big outfit that feeds children and feeds people at like Fenway Park and Boston Garden and all of these big arenas and places like that. It's a big food. Uh, uh, providing company, and they're the company that uh, has the contract with the city of Wuhan to feed the children. Now, I know all of every school plus the high school. So they're the only bidder this year. So I guess they they win the contract if you're the only bidder. I suppose if they knew they were the only bidder, they bid a little more. But they do a good job. I don't see any skinny kids in the school, uh, so they must uh, they eat some pizza down there. I know that. I can smell it. Come in the school. The only trouble is they eat about ten o'clock in the morning. I think. You know what I mean? I, I, I they don't like we we always say have breakfast, lunch, and supper. Well, when you're in school, you have lunch early. So you can smell if it wash right through the school or whether it's a ventilation system or whatever they're doing down there, if they're making, but it's basically pizza you can smell. Make you hungry. Huh. Special Permits Committee, Moving Truck and Auto earns an endorsement from the Special Permits Committee. So the Special Permits Committee voted three to one that that should pass. And I think uh, Mike Raymond was the only one who voted against it because he's the ward alderman up there. And uh, I think last Tuesday night actually it passed. So I think the, uh, that Holland is gonna get a permit to do a little, uh, I guess in this day and age, you'd have to say the recycling of uh, junk, junk cars or junk stuff. I think if you have like a, say you had a, old, in the olden days you had a hot water heater with probably a lot of copper in it and stuff. You could take it to the junkyard, the guy might give you five bucks for it. And nowadays, I don't know if it's, I think it's all plastic in the middle, so I don't know if there's any money in it. But if you have anything that's uh, metal, uh, copper, brass, aluminum, all that kind of stuff, then you bring it up to him and they weigh it and whatever, the, it's in the paper every day, whatever the price is, and they, they pay you that price and, and then they save it. And when they get a lot of it, they ship it to Boston and they put it on a boat and send it to Japan or uh, China and they send it back in a new car. So, excuse me, that's what happens to it. A lot of people say it's a service in a community and then a lot of people say, well, let, let them do it in some other community. So that's where the argument comes. You know, it's not an argument, it's basically a discussion. You know, what's going to look like, you know? In the olden days, you go by Chelsea and you see a, a pile of cars, junk cars as big as this building, you know? But that's what they did there. They crushed cars and they loaded them onto a, a big ship and sent them to whoever was melting that stuff down and uh, sending it back to you as a finished product in a washing machine or something. And that's a service provided. You know, they do that with cardboard, with paper, and he wants to do it with metal, so I guess he got a permit to do it, so good for him. Joyce students don't participate. The middle school trip to D.C. is challenged. Kennedy kids are going to Washington, D.C. And Mrs. Brune, the alderman from Ward 5, wants to know how come the Joyce kids don't get to participate. Well, I think some teachers ought to get together at the Joyce or the, with the principal or whoever and say we want to have a trip to 
Disneyland, uh, Las Vegas, or wherever they want to go. I mean, my kids uh, all went on trips when they were in the school system. I don't know that one school has to do it what the other school uh, does. She used the argument that uh, the schools are with Dr. Reese who's out there teaching the kids or he's having the teachers teach his system as far as the education is concerned. And she takes a step further and says, well, going on trips uh, is part of the educational program. And I, I kind of agree with that, but I think it costs money and the parents have to agree. And I think if you're uh, uh, ahead of the curve, like somebody at the uh, Kennedy Middle School must be, is saying, well, let's get out there, talk to your parents. If we can raise up a few hundred bucks, we'll uh, take a trip down to Washington and see the Jefferson Memorial and you know, whatever, all this stuff, the history of uh, the country and all that stuff in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, you know, I don't know why every kid in the city has to go there. But she might be right, but I, 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 I kind of disagree with her on that point. But So we'll see what happens. Maybe the, the, uh, the Joyce students now will, uh, then we'll have a competition. We went to a better place than you. They'll say, yeah, where'd you go? We went to Washington. Well, we went to Hampton Beach. I don't like that. Lake Winnipesaukee or something. I don't know, they go to six, they still go to Six Flags. Is that a good place to go to? I never went there, but let them all go to Six Flags. Locust Street proposal, no vote still on the Chambers parking plan. You know, I, ha I had it hard about that last week. I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, the guy doesn't, the person who owns the property doesn't want to sell it. So it's a big building, a commercial building that the Edison was in, the phone company was in, and we had discussed this before. The city almost went over there before they redid the, the, uh, the public works garage at uh, North Warren. So they would have trucks going in and out of, in the winter time, they would have trucks going in and out of there all the time, snow plows and all that kind of stuff. So they, it would have been uh, pretty much the same. But now they're saying, well, if you can get all your 10 deliveries between two or three in the morning, uh, or two and three in the afternoon, or something. you know what I mean? All of these things, <clears throat> which Paul and I discussed last week, they put uh, hundreds of uh, special permits out. And I don't know who checks them, nobody does, you know. I think uh, Holland, I think he had 23 uh, little amendments onto his special permit that he has to do. Build a fence this high, put bushes there, you know, you know, all this kind of stuff to make it look perfect. So when you're driving down Route 38 and you look over to your right as you're going into Wilmington, you want to see like a, like a perfect mountains over there and I just you, you don't want to see piles of trash they build a big fence and put bushes and hide everything behind there so he'll do that and he'll make money but chambers I don't get it I don't know what they want there and then they all them from what seven insisted that's a tight corner you can't get a corner around the corner with a truck I know there's five guys who work for the city who drive a truck around that corner like a nothing. You know, I'd do it myself. But it's not a good reason. It's even, even if you couldn't get around there with a truck, it's not a good reason to, to deny the permit. It's the activity. They're afraid that with that many cars going in and out, it'll be like a, a, a I don't know what it'll be, it'll just like more traffic there. And I think somebody, uh, one of the, somebody in the school department, uh, maybe it was the superintendent that said he wasn't happy. He might have been a little unhappy there with, with the kids, all the kids uh, in the traffic there. But I mean, there's been traffic there with all the trucks and all the Edison trucks and telephone trucks and all. That. So I, I don't know if there's ever going to be a resolution. But you can only say no to traffic for so long because it's not a good reason to deny anything. Because there's nothing you can do about it. Go to land and buy a car. Go to land and buy five cars, you know. Go to Herb Chambers, buy 10 cars. You can raise them, you can drive them off. Just give them away, people go. There's nothing you can do about it, you know. Until the government says, 
You can't drive your car on Tuesday and Thursday. You know, people only get to use the car certain days of the week or something like that because, you know, you have to be a little bit older to understand that uh, 128 used to be, when it was first opened up, it was only two lanes going in each direction. So now it's four lanes going in each direction and they're not going very fast if you drive over there. If you go, like I go to Demoulis, I look down onto the highway and everybody stopped. And in the morning, you go to Montville Avenue, you can't you take you from Vernon Street, you can't get to the highway in the morning. And then when you get there, you get on the highway and, and it takes you uh, an hour to get to, uh, to Boston. So there's just too many cars and there's nothing you can do about it. Grade three and eight are gonna switch to the PARCC. Now that, the CC I think means core curriculum, but I'm not so sure what the, uh, what the PAR stands for. And then that's, uh, that's what's gonna happen there. And then the school board okays to start the MCAS. People, all the kids would say the MCAS, you're gonna have MCAS day. So they go up there and they take all the tests. And then the argument from the people on the outside is that, well, the teachers teach to the MCAS and they don't get any other education. They just teach them about the test is gonna be because we want our numbers to be high. And everybody goes, oh yeah, go to Woburn High, the numbers are high. Everybody, every city and town around here, the numbers are in the 99 percentile. So I, whether that's teaching to the test, I don't know. But this new system is supposed to be better, but we'll see. I can guarantee if I live long enough, uh, the PARCC, they'll be changing that pretty soon too. They'll be saying, oh, that didn't work. So let's change it to back to the MCAS or change it to some other uh, situation. Because they're never happy with what the way they're teaching the kids. They say, uh, how long ago? Oh God, I can't even think of it. 65 years ago, so I went in first grade. Dick and Jane, Spot, the dog. You learn how to read. They taught you how to read the first grade. They taught you colors, teach you how to color. You know, you learn how to make change and count money. And there you go, out the door you go. And that's, that was your education. You learn how to write. I, I can read, I can write legibly. And I can tell you one thing. Half the kids in this school can't do it because penmanship went out with the computer, you know, and then the whole language is going to change because when you think about it, the word to, right, to, T-O, T-O-O, T-W-O. Now, you, I send you a message on your computer, what do I put? Two, the number two. Are we going to the movies? Two. So that'll all change. Now, those words are gone and out of the vocabulary. Nobody will ever use them again. And that's the degree of the way the education system is going in this country. The last bit of business is the uh, legislature is passing the uh, minimum wage. So in January of 2015, which is six months away, seven months away, it go up a buck. 2016 goes up a buck. 2017 goes back up a buck. It's eleven dollars. You know, sounds like a lot. Now eleven dollars right now, I would be all right for get a raise for if you're working for a minimum wage. But waiting three years to get up to eleven years, eleven dollars, I don't think is a, is a, is such a big deal. Right. And then the compromise was that they have to help the uh, business community with their uh, unemployment insurance uh, numbers. So the business community will get their, uh, will, will get their, 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 their relief probably will come immediately. But we have to wait for 2017. We'll have to ask the, uh, the congressman, uh, the representative from the 30th Middlesex District, when the business community gets their relief. And I'll bet it's a lot sooner than the, uh, the people looking to get a minimum wage up to $11. All right, Jennifer. The Women Historical Society show tonight at seven o'clock.
The subject is Reuben in the Revolutionary War. So try and get down there. They put on a great show. The, the Historical Society is going to get famous one of these days because uh, the people who are running it, uh, Blasier, Brian Ouellette, uh Mrs. Lucero, and all that gang over at the Historical Society, they do a great job, a great job. So if you get an opportunity, go down and see it. And if you're not going to see it, turn on the Americans playing soccer in Brazil. Next time.